Like any home more than 25 years old, an occasional update is necessary. Here's a photo of the New England Aquarium under construction in 1968. You can see the giant ocean tank beginning to take shape in the middle. The design was state-of-the-art for its time, but in recent years, the ocean tank has begun to show its age. Now, though, the tank's denizens of the deep have some spruced-up digs. It's a home improvement that took over five years of planning. We actually had to empty this 200,000 gallon tank and we had to have a find an alternative home for the 600 animals at the time that were living in it. From sharks to exotic fish to this 90 year old turtle, every animal in the giant tank at the New England Aquarium was placed in alternative housing as it underwent a facelift. Aquarium spokesperson Tony Lacasse says it took nine months of after-hours construction. The very first thing we did was we popped out the old windows. The original windows from the giant ocean tank had been there since the 1960s, and often they were uh, up to two inches thick through three different layers of glass. And we've replaced those windows now with a clear plexiglass. That means a much clearer view of the creatures for the one million visitors the aquarium sees each year. But the tank's 2,000 inhabitants benefit too in the form of a new brightly colored coral reef, painstakingly designed by a local artist. One of the things that happens in a coral reef is that they've got a lot of complex features, places that animals can hide from larger predators. We've made this reef about 100% more complex. We've added about 1,000 features to this tank. It's a spectacular sight for visitors, and it seems to be having an effect on the fish as well. Our head fishes curator, um, just walking through the other day, noted about six different species that were courting and mating. And you might think, well, what's the significance of that? Well, that means is that these fish are really comfortable. They feel like they're in a natural environment. Call it a labor of love all around. All right, joining me are Bud Riss, president and CEO of the New England Aquarium, and Bill Burgess, who chairs the aquarium's board. Well, this is really cool. I haven't been down to see it yet. Mm -hmm. but So my first question is, how did you get every creature out of there, and where were they? All those th hundreds of animals, where were they? Well, this was a major logistical challenge, as, you can, as, yeah. you, uh, as you've uh, guessed, Emily. And we, first of all, built a whole new facility in Quincy, which is not open to oh. the public. But there are a number of tanks there, some of them quite large. Uh, so we moved the penguins that used to be around yep, the bottom yep. of the big tank down to Quincy. They breathe air. They're a little easier to move. Then we moved the fish in the big tank into the pool where the penguins were. Mm. And, of course, we had to heat it up 20 degrees yeah. to make it like the Caribbean rather than the you know, lower southern hemisphere. Um, and then we've added Did now... Did you lose any creatures along the way? Well, you lose a few along the way, um, more <laughs> probably from old age than anything else. Um, then we've added, in, in the new tank, we'll have 1,500 more fish and animals than the old one. And those all went to Quincy, where they're quarantined for 30 to 90 days before they go in the big tank. So it's been a very huge oh, so animal all, shuffle. They're not all in the big tank. They're yet. almost all in at this point. And uh, we're, as we're going to have now three times as many, maybe four times as mm. many fish as used to be in the tank. Wow. So, so Bill, is, is the coral reef real? Is it real coral or is it fake? No, it's a replica of a Caribbean reef. Um, and because fish actually feed off reefs. So how do they, how do they get nourishment off of this? They don't. Well, we provide we provide food for the fish in the tank themselves. And yeah, I want to know how you do that for each individual. <laughs> I mean, how do you do that? It depends on the species. You know, some we just like you would at a tropical aquarium at home. You, just, you have a, you know, you give them some. But we how? Actually, how do you get it down to? Divers go down. Oh, and divers go They'll down. feed a school of fish at a time. Now, some oh. of the bigger animals, like the sharks, actually get hand-fed one at a time uh, different kinds of food. For, really? Food yeah. on a stick. Food on a stick. And so do they see the divers coming and they come? They get pretty well trained after a while, and it's important for obvious reasons to keep the sharks well fed. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, do, do, the, do the sharks, they, they must prey on other fish, don't they? Oh, yeah. And one of the things I found interesting um, uh, from the team at the aquarium is that in the reintroduction of the fish back into the, into the giant ocean tank, we started with the small fish first. Uh, because they need to find a place to sure, hide, hide yeah. right? <laughs> and they gradually get larger and larger until uh, everybody's back in the tank and, and living happily together, we hope. One of the things we've really tried to do, Emily, with this, with a whole new reef inside the tank is, and really what we're known for as an aquarium, is to replicate very carefully what it would look like in mm -hmm. the natural environment. What we did in this case was design a reef as it would have looked maybe 100, 200 years ago, some have said even before Columbus, to show what a real 
living, vibrant, healthy reef would be like, as opposed to many reefs today around the world that have, know, have been degraded by one means there or another. There still are some very, very beautiful ones out there. But there are. The, the Bahamas are in tough shape, yes. and so there's an important conservation message here that we need to take better care of the ocean environment. Mm. What was going on in the aquarium while this was being redone? Did, I mean, were, were people still coming? Yeah, we had uh, we had notified the public that the aquarium was under uh, under uh, uh, construction in terms of the work we were going on. All the side galleries were open. How long that, did this take? Uh, it's been we've been working on it since uh, September, right? Ten, ten uh, months. That's uh, right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know we had built uh, the Trust Family Shark and Ray uh, exhibit, um, the New Balance uh, Marine Mammal uh, Pavilion on the backside. All the side galleries were open, but the giant ocean tank was not open. So. Yeah, we, we did reduce our price during that time, uh, and we did have a lower attendance. It's starting to yeah. rebuild now, as uh, yeah, well, and we had good. planned for all that yeah. as part of our so process. 200,000 gallons of water. I mean, what's the mathematical water pressure situation there? I mean, there's got to be some pretty good plexiglass uh, it's, windows. Well, there. it's 25 feet, feet deep, and when you get to the bottom, there's a lot of pressure. So the new acrylic that we've now put in there is four and a quarter inches thick. And one plate of that acrylic, four and a quarter inches thick, weighs about 1,200 pounds. And how do you keep the water aerated, you know, fresh? There's a whole bunch of, one, one of the reasons that we're, we can now put many more fish in there than we used to have is we've dramatically improved what we call the life support system. So all of the filters and water handlers and so on that, you know, turn over the water and treat it uh, have been dramatically improved so we can have more life in there. And mm -hmm. the temperature, I mean, because not all fish thrive at the same temperature as something like it, but you have to keep it at a certain it's a because... It simulates a Caribbean environment, so it's about 74 degrees, and many marine organisms, and this is another sort of conservation message, can tolerate only a few degrees yeah. change, and so yeah. that's why climate change is such a worry. The water in the tank actually comes from Boston Harbor, and it's a real success story. We treat that water a whole lot less than we used to 40 years ago when we opened. It just goes through a filtration system today. We heat it up, of course but it comes right out of the harbor. I mean, do you need to change it? Or that's kind of a dumb question. No, and we can bring more in as we need it, yeah. and we filter it. And, you know, I think that I think the life support system in that tank is designed to turn over and treat the water every 90 minutes. Right. So. so tell me about Myrtle yeah. the turtle. How long has uh, she been there? Well, she's been there since the opening since of the, the aquarium. Opening. And nobody really knows how old Myrtle is. We think You said 90? Maybe 80 to 90 years old, yeah. Where did she come from? She was a rescued turtle. No, um, really? Turtles are solitary animals in the wild. Uh, they live quite a long time, and uh, she's pretty phenomenal. She's close to 600 pounds. What, is, what does Myrtle eat? Myrtle eats a lot of lettuce. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. And, and it's Heads very, of lettuce. And it's very <laughs> interesting. We have to feed her while we're feeding everybody else because she tends to grab all their food. So she has her own little feeding spot at the top of the tank. She t tends to grab everybody else's? Yeah. She's the grand dame of the uh, giant ocean. Tank. How do you get that big being a vegetarian? <laughs> does she get along with all the other creatures? She really she... does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to be careful when you're in the tank, when you're diving in there. She's so large, uh, she cannot stop very quickly. So you have to make sure you get out of the way. Yeah. How many divers go in at a time? They must have to. Up to three or four or five, you know. And one of the new things that we'll have at the top of the tank, which is a, there's a whole new exhibit now at the top of the tank. And there are two very large television screens at the top of the tank, like five by eight feet. The divers will be wearing live video cams and will be able to talk to people That's at the wonderful. top of the tank. So you'll have the view from inside the tank as well as from the outside walking around. You've it. both been in, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, just to, to build on what Bud said, um, you know, what we're doing with the divers and the video cams, et cetera, is, is all part of integrating our research and conservation mm -hmm. and education work into the aquarium um, experience. And... Uh, We've opened up a Blue Planet Action Center on the first floor, sort of the starting point for mm -hmm. examining right. the world. Can't wait to get over there. Thank Good. you. Bill Burgess, Bud Riss, thanks Very so much. Good. Thanks for having us. And that is it for Greater Boston. I'm Emily Rooney. Thanks for watching.